Welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. It's time to wake up and shine on. I am excited about this podcast and I am, I feel like every, almost like every time we do another one, each one gets a little bit more exciting to do. You know, just starting a habit and getting into it, the more you do it, the deeper you go. Yeah, podcasting has been really fun. It's been a different kind of experience, especially when we just decided to make it a discussion in a different way. And I just really enjoy being able to share experiences and connect with people in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's been Mm -hmm. really neat seeing each other like interact and dive deeper into our stories together too it is one is it's a place that we can go to express ourselves and that is i'm learning more and more one of my missions my main sole purpose on this life is to help people express themselves because we're all a connection we're all connected to the divine and we all have this ability to express ourselves Mm mm-hmm Expressing yourself is so important in this life. I feel like that's why we came into the physical. It's really interesting to me that there's some people that don't express themselves, that don't enjoy music, don't enjoy art or dancing. I mean, there's even some religions that don't allow those things. Yeah, it could be that way. Uh, it's, But it is life-changing because I feel there is an innate nature to all of us to want to express ourselves because we are living a a world where you know we f- feel separation sometimes and i think that's part of it and being able to express ourselves and our uniqueness is it's part of what makes life great what if we only had one kind of pizza that sounds boring. What if it was only cheese pizza your whole life? I mean, that just sounds boring. It sounds a little boring. But what, like, what if you could only have cheese pizza and no other kind of food? Hmm. That sounds even more boring and very restrictive yeah. and unhealthy. Very unhealthy. So, what if you can have a variety of things, you know, broccoli and cauliflower and fruit, all kinds of stuff? That makes life great you also have the ability to eat healthy because you have more choices because you know that those things exist you educate yourself in the the different areas of life and what is good to nourish yourself with and what is weighing you down or holding you back yeah we just talked about this a lot in my chakra course in the crown chakra the crown chakra i think it's a it's a great great chakra Mm mm-hmm It's one that I feel like is not talked about as much because people think they don't understand it. Hmm. Um, But I found that it's really just when you are able to acknowledge your your areas, your growth in all of the lower chakras and pull yourself up and be able to see it from an outer perspective Hmm. and Hmm. see your creative flow, your physical experience from above, almost in like a like a viewer's way, like that the crown chakra. And the, what do you mean by the viewer's way? Mm, like almost like astral projecting or something like, you you know, in like movies or in like visu- visuals, they say to leave your body and to look upon yourself from above. Okay. That's kind of like what I see connecting to your crown chakra is because it's connecting to your higher self. And then you can see yourself having a creative expression rather than if you're like just in the moment and... Just for like, say example, you're having an argument or something and you can't see it from the outside perspective. You can only see it from the ego's perspective. Then your creative expression is lost and you just shut down. But when you can kind of channel yourself up and see it from like the overview or the big picture, you give yourself the the freedom and the expression to handle um, even events or whatever from a different perspective that's happening to you rather than just seeing it from your eyes in Hmm. that moment okay 
Interesting. So Shannon likes to go out of her body when she's being creative, when you're painting. So you're saying you step out of your body and you just watch it be creative. Um, I mean, sort of. When I mean I'm painting and stuff, I just allow myself to channel it through and I try to see it from almost like a finished perspective, like what I would need to do to get the image out. But what you were saying was going out of your body and looking down upon it. Yeah, I guess I was talking more from like our expression, our freedom to express with each other in like thoughts and ideas more so than even like creativity. Huh. Okay. I think that almost all of creative expression is a channel from the divine. Mm-hmm. You see many people talking about oh, this just channeled right through me. Or a lot of famous paintings just channeled through one of the artists. Definitely. It's it's almost like bringing a dream into this physical reality. Taking it from a dream, a, a higher vibration, and you're like reeling it in like you're fishing. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's something I was kind of talking about with the chakras too, is by bringing it in. So a thought or an idea... Or a, a creative expression, say a painting, or even a dance. It, it begins in your crown chakra as like just a thought. And then you start to channel it through your third eye and you start to visualize it. And then as you take that to the next level, you start to communicate it. Whether it's through voice and using your throat chakra or communicating it through that self-expression. And as you move it down, it comes to the, like your heart chakra and it goes through your heart chakra and it gains a love you you find a gratitude or a thankfulness for this vision or this creativity or this flow um and that's how ideas start to form you you start creating a love for it and that's where the idea kind of sparks and i think the collective starts feeling it too because when the collective starts feeling it we start having similar ideas to other people like if you've ever went and seen a painting and you're like wow that's similar to something Mm -hmm. i had seen um or if you watch a movie and you're like oh wow i had that happen to me and then it goes down into your your solar plexus and you're starting to create relationships and connections to these ideas and these creative expressions. And then it flows down into the sacral and you begin creating it and sharing it on a deeper level. And it's almost like the ideas then been birthed through into the physical and Mm -hmm. other people can start experiencing it too. Taking root. And then it takes root as other people start to experience it. It takes root into the physical and it becomes a physical idea that manifests. And it all started from a simple thought. Mm Mm-hmm just channels all the way through our physical bodies and creates this Mm. collective consciousness of creativity. Yeah. It's so wild. It is wild. But because we're so physical in this this reality, it does take some growth. You have to water that idea. Mm -hmm. You got to plant some seeds. Plant the seeds and keep watering it every day until it grows fully. Mm. So it takes takes commitment, right? mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what's important, too, is we have all these spiritual tools, these um, rituals. And, I mean, we have books and books upon knowledge that explains all these, like, self-affirmations. Mm, last episode, I think we were talking about books. We were talking about books, books that changed our life. And we yeah. could just keep going because there's so many books. But here's oh, the there's thing. There's so much knowledge in books. Holy moly, it yeah. blows my mind. I love to learn. That was another episode where we talked learn. about a lot of books and just ways we like to get our knowledge. But going back to that... You can have all this knowledge and you can have all these different perspectives and even life lessons. But if you don't put the lessons into action, if you don't take the knowledge and put it into action to to either express yourself or to yeah. just f- kind of start acknowledging different ways you respond to the yeah. physical, the yeah. knowledge doesn't serve you unless you put it into action. You got to put it into action. And the funny thing is, as you put this stuff into action... It, it it feels good and you begin to gain energy from it. Mm-hmm. So in in my perspective, sometimes the ego will try to trick us into being into saying, oh, I don't have enough energy and I'm not going to be able to do it right now or I'll put it off until I have enough energy. And then you just never have enough energy to do it. But in your higher perspective, you do this thing that you know is right. 
and you feel good because you do it. And then you gain energy from that good feeling. Mm-hmm. And as you continue to build upon those types of actions, you will have so much energy. It'll be spilling over into a saucer. Mm-hmm. That's a Lisa Nichols quote that I love. Mm-hmm. It's like, fill yourself up so full that you overflow. And then you can then share with others. Because you've accumulated it. You've accumulated knowledge, self-experience, life experience, understanding, Mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our friend Breezy always says in her workshops, give from your saucer. Mm -hmm. So that you always have enough. For yourself, because self care and self love is the key. If we could all have that for ourselves, then the world would be healed. So, it's it is important to make sure we are full before we give back. It might seem selfish, but as I've been learning, it's more. It's more loving to everyone involved if you can take care of yourself. Yeah, and there's different ways to take care of yourself, too. Self-care isn't all about, like, comforting baths and things like that, like mm-hmm. rituals and things. It's right. about, like, like, I go for a run. Mm-hmm. And when I go for my furthest run, that's, I think, when I feel the most energy gaining back from that. When I feel the most inspired to do things. Because I knew I pushed myself and I pushed my limits enough to know it was a guaranteed when I ran further than I did a few months ago, I, it was guaranteed. I improved that day. There was no doubt in my mind because I knew I ran a little bit further. Yep. You did something and put yourself out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I think something that's really important too, is to just stop procrastinating. That's been a huge self-care thing for me, too. The more I Mm. procrastinate, the more anxiety I build around something, something Mm -hmm. that could be easy, simple, and small. It becomes so huge because you procrastinate it. You put so much energy into it that you begin to fear it. Uh, I had a friend that she told me the same thing. She's like, she's recently stopped procrastinating things. She's starting, like, working on her business. She's done things that she's been putting off for years. Um, she was somebody who really loved her hair and decided to cut her hair. And she said she feels like a whole new person. So that was a self-care thing, doing something for your visual experience, Mm -hmm. like appearance Mm -hmm. and just upgrading your, yourself, making yourself feel good. You don't have to necessarily like fully upgrade your closet or something, but just do something that makes you feel good about yourself and stop procrastinating, putting off things that you've been wanting to do. Uh What's that one thing you've been wanting to do for so long? Time to make some macro and micro goals to start achieving that thing. Yes. You will make time for what is really important. And one thing you love to to talk about is I don't have enough time for that. But mm. you honestly do make time for what's important. We've made we've been we've been able to make time for, say, this podcast. I make it important to find time to go for a run to do my stretches Mm. because it's important to me i could wake up and go about my day and be like i don't have time to stretch right now but because i do it first thing and i feel so great afterwards my body feels so good after i stretch if i don't stretch the whole day i can i can feel it my body is rigid i could pull a muscle so much easier Mm. I think it's important to find a schedule that works for you because not the same schedule works for everybody. You're a morning person. You love being a morning person. You love waking up early and getting things done. I'm a night like person. 8.30 early. Yeah, I'm a night person. I My internal clock wakes up at 11, 11 a.m. And then I like to stay awake and work and, and work on projects and do things that make me happy until I start to get sleepy. I could stay up all night. I remember being a kid and I would stay awake until 3 or 4 a.m. because... Something about the night and the moon just energized me in a different way. And it's funny because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sitting and shine. Everyone thinks I love sunshine, but I love yeah. the moonlight as well. Me too. And I do as well. schedule that works for you. Yeah. I like to party. So definitely sometimes I'll stay up really late till the, till the sun comes up the next day. But I just, 
I've tried to wake up at 5.30 for school for a while, and that mm. was terrible. 5.30 is way too early. When I've tried to wake up around that time to get to the sun, and the sun literally stays behind the mountains until about 9, 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so you were going to the wrong side of the mountains. Something. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I was on, I'm on the wrong side of the mountains, but do you know if I wake up at 8.30, 9 o'clock, get some stuff done? feel good about myself before it's noon i'm having a great i'm having a great rest of that day you know um i think go ahead i it, it is important to have those days where you can sleep in and where you can wake up at 11 or noon and not have anything to do i think that's really good and and it's healthy as long as it's not very often I I love getting to work on all these things, but I do love sleeping in. And I think it's a weekend thing for me. I think that's why I was just telling people it's important to find a schedule that works for you. Everyone's schedule is yeah. different. Yeah. But find something that works for you and stop procrastinating. Stop procrastinating. Put yourself a self-care routine that helps get you motivated in the morning. So yeah. I've been uh, listening to other podcasts and things like that because it helps motivate me. You've been making me. time for it. You know, you... You can say, oh, I don't have time to listen to this, but it's something really you enjoy. You're obviously, you know, you just put it on right away and you don't even. Well, I like, I like multitasking. I, I enjoy like I'll cook and I'll listen to something educational, inspirational. I enjoy doing art and listening to mm, other things. That's how I get and... my, my education <laughs> and stuff like that. It's like by learning and working on things hands on at the same time. Yeah, it gives you something to put your put your hands on because some people are fidgety and they need something to fit to fidget with. So why not fidget with something that you can feel good about? I mean, one of my favorite pastimes is making jewelry and working with my crystals and listening to, to podcasts and educational videos. Um, I love doing different workshops and learning from other people. Uh, one of the questions I get asked all the time is like, how did I start doing what we do and i think it's just we took action like we started sharing our story i mean we're just here by a mic sharing our story talking into a microphone and wanting to connect with other people and find a way to share this knowledge that we've been gathering and part of that goes back to the the stop procrastinating like if you want to do something that inspires you to wake up and shine on take action there's time even if you have to work like a, a nine to five job on the way to work. You can like meditate and think about the, the different projects that you can do. Start doing your macro and micro goals for your dream projects. Uh, Lisa Nichols was big on that. She was all about like just because you have to work like a, a day to day job to to pay your bills for a while. That doesn't mean that your dream can't succeed and survive and thrive. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I would like, if I can, to take it back to the procrastinating, uh, mm -hmm. procrastination thing because sometimes there are things that I really want to do and maybe I have put off and then I go to do it and something ends up blocking me and stopping me. And I know, I'm sure a lot of people are, are experiencing that as well where they, they've tried to do something and somehow reality blocks it. Mm. So I want to kind of acknowledge that, first of all, and maybe offer a little bit of uh, what I've learned from that. Because I think when it, when it gets blocked, it may not be the perfect time, but it doesn't mean that it it's not supposed to happen. Definitely. Like, look at the lesson and see why it's being blocked and see what you can do to to line up the pieces in a different way and also just remember that divine timing is such a thing it We've is learned that it is such a thing so finding a good balance between procrastination and knowing when the best time to do something is it's going to be a little different for everyone i highly suggest meditation because when you can meditate and, and allow yourself to, even if you're thinking about stuff, at least allow yourself to focus and think about this 
thing that you might be uh, might be procrastinating about procrastinating about meditate on it Mm -hmm. with that on your mind you will begin to think of solutions and answers and it could be a co-created divine channel that you receive because you're in meditation you're allowing that that channel to come through and so you can receive basically like a hey sorry you got blocked but here's Here's your opportunity to do something you've been waiting to do. Yeah. It's like maybe, okay, so you, you've you been procrastinating and you go to do this thing and, and you get blocked. And then all of a sudden a much better opportunity arises for you to do that thing in a way more efficient. Mm. So instead of, if you get blocked, instead of being like, the fuck, I'm getting blocked. Maybe I'm not supposed to do this. If it feels like it's something you are meant to do, keep faith that you, the reason you got blocked is because a bigger, better opportunity is on the horizon. Mm. And as you begin to open yourself up and look out for these opportunities, this opp- big opportunity, you let go, you open up, boom. Yeah, you release that attachment. You release the attachment to what you thought that you had to have and you receive something better. Yeah. The universe leads you to a, a better path and hopefully the path of least resistance as soon as you release like water. the resistance. Yeah. It, water it just always begins finds to a, flow. That path. And it comes back to I mean, first of all, I want to give you a shout out because don't you have a a whole meditation about procrastination on your YouTube? I do have a procrastination meditation on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, so people can go to Silamon.com. It'll lead you to his YouTube. Look up procrastination. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I have a website by then. Who knows? I like that your website goes to YouTube. <clears throat> Silamon.com is a thing. On Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube, you can just search Silamon Official. Nice. But anyway, so procrastinating is really really limiting it's usually fear-based you're fearing an outcome or you're fearing the amount of time you have to put into it or the reaction of Mm -hmm. someone there's usually some fear-based connection to procrastination but that also is usually connected to a control drama so that's something that keeps reoccurring something that you find yourself dealing with over and over and over something maybe you picked up as a young child yeah from either from your parents or from a, a, a past experience i learned a lot about control dramas when i read the book the celestine prophecy and then i started doing research on it and through psychology and different stuff like that um so there's another book for you celestine prophecy Um, It was really eye-opening to start seeing these different control dramas, even within myself. For example, like, I get really excited to make the jewelry, but then when it comes to having to, like, upload it and add it to my website, it really doesn't take that much time, but in my head, it really does. I mean, it takes hours, but I make it into this huge deal, and I start putting it off for days and sometimes weeks, and then by the time I, I go to share it, I've lost kind of the excitement of it because I've procrastinated for so long. Mm -hmm. So if I could just get over that fear of having to sit down and dedicate like an hour, then I could share my beautiful creations in such a quicker fashion. Mm -hmm. So I realized that control drama and I found a way to work around it and share it in in a a deeper way. I realized that I wanted to be able to show the texture and part of my fear was that I was going to put all this time and effort into uploading things and then people wouldn't even care to look at it. And I also realized that I enjoyed connecting with people in a different way. Mm -hmm. So I started doing the live feeds where I could connect and share the crystals and show them the texture, but also answer questions. And it's kind of taken my fear out of it in a different way. So now I get excited to upload it to my website because people can see it quicker. Mm -hmm. But it It was something I procrastinated for a long time. If you, I mean, if you think about it, if you're already exhausted, you're spending all this time and energy investing into a lot of, just a lot of worry and stress that is ne- unnecessary. People suffer more from the fear of doing something than they actually get from the something. I've heard that a lot about 
like revealing things to you, like revealing parts of yourself to the world. Right. Like Jason Mraz yep, was so right. worried about being bisexual. Yeah. And when he finally did, he he stated, oh, it was like no big deal. Like, oh, I worried all this time for really like not a big deal. Yeah. We put all this fear into worrying about how other people view us and it's really like most people are so worried about themselves in some way that they're not trying to judge you. And if they're judging you, it goes back to that whole, they're judging themselves and they probably think that about themselves. Mm. Like if you're so worried about other people judging your hair, do you judge other people's hair? Why do you do that? Is that something that makes you feel good or comfortable? Like I, I've, I've just kind of started processing these things when I start worrying about like, if somebody thinks X, Y, and Z about me, like, why do I worry about that? Is that something that I look at or care about in other people? And if so, then like, why does it matter? And I started using a quote as an affirmation. It's actually a Dr. Seuss quote. And it's like, the good old Dr. Seuss. Yeah, those who mind don't matter. And those who matter don't mind or something like that along those lines. Like if I start worrying or overthinking that people are going to judge me or misunderstand me or not like me, it's like, you know what? It's not my problem to worry about that. It's my, my focus should be to live the best life I can live to help Mm. inspire others. Mm -hmm. It's a good mantra. And especially because I believe that, our society has developed into a place where gossip and worrying and all that it's it's instilled into us like the control dramas and so we have to accept that it's part of it but we can also you know you know let it go and forgive ourselves and others and love ourselves and others and just continue to have loving kindness in your heart. I, I'm learning. I'm learning. But I think that was a great point. And I'm just really excited that you said it. Now I've got Let It Go stuck in my head. And I started thinking about... Let it go. Yeah, let it go. I started go. thinking about how they wouldn't let her just be herself. And be the ice queen mm, that she was. They and they her hid her. Mm-hmm. They hid her from being herself and told her she was terrible. And then she didn't have a chance to be there for her Imagine sister. she could have learned how to control it and been and she did. awesome. They loved her. In Not only end, yeah. did they love her, but she brought her whole community back together just because yes. she was willing to shine her light. Mm. And though she had a very cold, dark secret that yeah. she was terrified of, yep. she was able to connect with her sister again just mm-hmm. by admitting. Saved the town. Yeah. And then they started, if you saw the Christmas special, sorry guys, huge frozen spoilers. Christmas but if you special. see the Christmas special, then you see that she starts creating traditions and bringing her community back together because because she was locked away she broke up her whole community and lost everything and rebuilt from scratch Mm -hmm. that's such a powerful movie and so many control Mm -hmm. dramas she had to break within herself i know and imagine how much better her life was because she did that now there's a another one coming out and she's gonna have some other big tests to overcome so yeah and it's because because life is an ongoing thing we're always learning you know there's no there's no way we can stop learning and stop improving in this life Mm -hmm. and sometimes maybe we take a step back and that's cool like it all happens to every fucking one of us we Mm -hmm. all fall down we all take a step back we all have failures michael jordan said he succeeded because he failed over and over and over again. If you don't try, you can't fail. Like, if you're afraid of failure, that means you never gave yourself a chance to even try. You might as well try, or what's your point? Like, what's the point of existing and doing the same old thing and having these big old dreams and not taking any action towards them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Failure is just a stepping stone to success. Yeah, it's true like we talked about that before yep so anybody who maybe feel bad for procrastinating or for anything in life you know just allow that to to be a lesson to be a stepping stone to get you to where you want to be do those things 
do those things. Even if the, if it gets blocked, at just making the action proved to the universe that you were willing to do it. So then it was like, okay, I'll give it, I'll give it an even better experience, knowing that it it knowing that this person is going to make this action. I'm going to give them a way better opportunity. So do those things, you know. Put just yourself do. out there. Put yourself out there. I'm, I'm I'm excited to do that more this fall. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. That was one I had to remind myself a lot too because you have to like grow. You have to get a little uncomfortable to break out of your your everyday routine, your everyday reality to keep upgrading your reality. And one way I do that is I, I start setting macro and micro goals. We just did one of those little rituals too where we started doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, set some macro goals for the next couple months and then you break them down into three smaller goals to start working towards that bigger goal. Uh, that's how I manifested getting the car upgrade. It's how we've manifested different um, places. We've done wellness centers and things like that, events, mm-hmm. um, opportunities. Mm-hmm. Those macro goals are huge. Yeah, yeah. ever since I, I've had a planner and been able to dedicate time to filling it out and just making appointments with myself to make sure that I'm following the right path Mm -hmm. for me just being able to look at my planner because i i I try to fill it out for the month before the month comes so that i can spend my time more wisely and through the summer it kind of got chaotic and you know scattered but you know I'm, i'm excited for fall because i'm coming back into it and it's just important to remember their cycles too like that's yeah. a control drama that you're starting to realize too, or like a reoccurring thing. You're starting to realize that you have, just like you have a different schedule, you have a schedule for how things get done. And the, the fall and winter months are that harvesting period and it's that creative period. Um, it's a time that most people will stay at home and work on things that they've been thinking about all year. Mm-hmm. It also becomes kind of crunch time because people like to set these big goals at the beginning of the year and expect them to be done by the upcoming <laughs> year. So they want to like really mm-hmm. like crunch. It's like having mm-hmm. a deadline for yourself in oh, school yeah. projects and stuff, you know. So uh, now it's like we said we were going to get this podcast up and running and um, working on the website and things like that. But it is important to also travel and to show up for our friends and our community. That was something we also had on our manifest list. And we wouldn't have probably done it if we wouldn't have rearranged the time and set those goals. Um, I've, I've gotten multiple. We're coming. I don't know when this podcast is coming out yet, but, but my 2018 goals that I wrote down, a bunch of them I've noticed have happened. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. You mean 2018 and 2019? Yeah. Nice. So you're starting to write your 2020 goals or your 2019 goals? I'm just thinking back to okay. <laughs> to January 2019, my goals for, for the 2019 year. Gotcha. You know, it's coming up to the end of the year and I've I've got a bunch of them checked off. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, uh, me too. It, it was really exciting to to see how things have evolved for so many people across the board. There's so many amazing community builders and opportunities that are that are really starting to arise. And I've, I've loved seeing our community come together and mm-hmm. our tribe grow. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my big things. Hey, tribe. You up, all tribe? are the best. Thanks I for just all your comments. Thank you all so much. Thanks for listening to us talk. Thanks for showing up and checking out our videos and talking in the Bring Me to Life Challenge. Yeah. Um, one of my big things this oh, year, yeah. one of my big goals was that I wanted to create a course. And uh, I, that was something that I was really excited to accomplish. The The Shocker course, not that only did I do it once, I did two rounds this year. And both yeah. of those tribes have been so magical. Yeah, Just seeing it and going through that experience. And I put myself through the the seven week or well, it was eight week course of just working full force into chakras and every time I do it full force yeah dude every time I do it I go through this process myself and I just feel like I level up and I see all these beautiful people level up and I learn mm-hmm. from them and then I do my 7 day challenge which is gives them the opportunity to to do it in a quicker fashion and I see them just level up even more it's 
it's so powerful. Guys, go look at the chakra stuff in my Light Up Your Life group. I, yeah. I'm excited about it. Community, it makes me happy. Community is, is great. And imagine how good it feels when you evolve and then getting to experience that over and over again with others that are in your community. Yeah. You start seeing the synchronicities and people connecting and friendships building because you show up. Oh, it's just, it's a good feeling. Oh, yeah. I am so happy that I have found a good community of people to share this world with. I agree. I I was recently talking to somebody that sent me a message and they were talking about how they, they wanted to connect with people in their physical community and they started sharing like their Reiki experiences, their spiritual commu- experiences, and they were kind of shut down. And they, they, she said that they just felt like the energy was very just not welcoming. Mm. And she wondered, she asked me why. And I, I told her, I was like, sometimes people get threatened or they just don't understand. If you start sharing it in a community where they just don't understand you'll start to feel a vibration that will draw you to where you do fit in. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's important too, is mm-hmm. to follow those synchronicities, follow those signs, follow those symbols yeah. and find your tribe. Yeah. Um, remember Ooh, your vibe attracts your tribe, but also too, that goes Definitely. back to like, if you're afraid that they're not going to understand you or you're afraid of being misunderstood, um, check your own vibration, but just mm-hmm. remember that sometimes people just don't know how to respond. It's okay too. Yes. Yes, uh, you just, for me, I just, if I know somebody's not going to understand, sometimes I don't even, I don't even, I conserve my energy. I think as you, as you waken up, as you put yourself out there, you w- you will begin to differentiate between the vibe of areas mm. and whether it's a safe vibe or uh, I don't understand. So I'm scared of it vibe. Yeah. I think it's just finding comfortable ways to communicate to you. I've realized that I, I struggle with small talk. I have social anxiety yeah. with small talk. Uh-huh. Um, I, I definitely like getting spiritual or just like talking about deep topics that aren't always the most comfortable for other people. So I struggle with small talk. Yeah. Um, you don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm, you, usually Shannon's the most talkative. And when we go to events and people aren't talking about consciousness and aliens, she's like, what do I say? I don't even know. Or I just, I, re- I feel like I get really repetitive and things like that. And it's not, and I think it's just in general, like I find myself being kind of awkward in public. So if you, if you see me in public and I, I feel like I'm being awkward, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, it, I think we all feel that way in, in a lot of different areas. Mm-hmm. Like So many of us are have social anxiety. And some of us come off super extroverted on whatever that chart is. It's like INFEP or whatever. I'm the introverted extrovert. Do you know which one you are? Because that'd be really cool to know. No, I don't know. Ah, man. I don't know what test you're talking about. It's like a personality test, but it's the introverted extrovert. I I think maybe we all have a little bit of both. I think so, too. You know, because we all are... We're all... We all have the ability to experience what we would like in this life. We could all channel aliens if we wanted to. I think it's just allowing yourself to process thought in a different way and to allow messages to come through and not being afraid of them. Yeah. Picking up on subtle energy. So anything you do, you're going to get better at. There are things that, before I, I started podcasting and working with audio, there were sounds that I didn't even notice or pick up on. But now I am, as I listen to my older stuff, I'm noticing some sounds that I never knew were even in there. Because I, because my ears have evolved and began picking up more sounds. And so that will like begin to happen with really anything. Yeah, it's kind of like they say, once you tune yourself into a frequency, you start seeing all of that 
Like if you want to see a pink car, then you're going to see all the pink cars. Yes. If you want or or feel this need to see auras, then you have that ability. You just unlock it. You allow yourself to understand it in a different way. Like some people say they see auras, but they don't necessarily physically see them. They feel them feel or they them. understand them. Yeah. It's acknowledging that they exist. Some people are like, oh, what's an aura? Like, I don't think auras are real. Or they, they like acknowledge there's an aura, but they don't even want to process how to see it. So they're not going to. I began practicing by trying to... if. If somebody was in front of a a black or a white background, and then you just let your eyes and focus, and then around them, sometimes there'll be a little glow of of a, of something. Sometimes it's yellow. Sometimes it's green. Then I think you're seeing probably like the the third layer of their aura, the like emotional layer. Yeah. But I found that some people's auras are just so dim. Like people that are just energetically yeah, drained. Like true. the people that you want to look for an aura around are people that are super energized. People woo. that are, <laughs> huh? I just, I just said woo. Yeah, people that are energized. Um, I like to look at people when they're speaking and see their aura because you can tell if they're really uh, like appreciative of what they're saying or like connected to what they're saying or if they're being forced like that's part of the reason i can't watch the news anymore i can just see the fakeness in it mm-hmm. and yeah. Wow. yeah and like little kids i love watching little kids or <sighs> because they're so funny they are, they so, are funny. so funny dude yeah, they're so silly they get so excited about the littlest things but yeah. they're also super expressive and like you can see <laughs> their sadness but you can see it in their aura too because they're so just fully in their emotions i mean imagine what we would be like if as kids, we were free to express ourselves and weren't always told we were wrong or that things weren't done like that or that we couldn't do it because we were embarrassing or any of that stuff. Imagine if we as kids were able to grow up with that freedom our whole lives. Can you imagine how funny we would all be? That's why so many people work on like accessing their inner child. That's something yeah. that I feel like I've been really working on in this they're last playful, couple of years. They're funny. Yeah. I mean, so many of us didn't get to be kids. How many of us had to like grow up and do adult things before we were even in our preteen years because parents or somebody weren't showing up? Like, yeah. it's so important to get that childhood innocence back, yeah. that fun, that laughter, that yeah. excitement. Yeah. Like, get excited about that ice cream cone. Get excited about going to that movie or seeing that thing that you've been wanting to see or do that is going to light you up. Oh, yeah. You know what I think is kind of silly and and not very cool? What? So, elementary, you have recess. Yeah. But then they cut it out. So in middle school, we didn't have recess. They take away your nature time, your outside in time. In high school, we didn't have recess. We had gym class, but like we didn't have recess where we were free to just go out and have fun, you know, and just play. In college, there's no time to have rec where you can go and kick a ball around. I love physical activity and as kids, most, even the girls, most of the boys, most of everyone in between likes to go out and kick a ball or just be physical. You gotta take it, take it away after elementary school. That's not very young. Like, that is, I'm still young in middle school. I, I think, still need that time. I think it just became people didn't want to monitor, like, preteens and people out on... They didn't want to deal with... That kind of drama or, I don't know, I mean, back in the day, they probably had people that they needed to work on farms and things, or it became like, you know what happens when you get a bunch of preteens together and puberty hits, like, they're not Maybe playing recess and, yeah, and kicking the ball. That's probably what <laughs> happened. But if they would have taught kids to meditate, instead of having a recess hour, why not have, like, 
um, like a sacred time hour, not necessarily like religious, but like this is your time to read or your time to meditate. They had study hall and stuff in my high school. But then after like the first year, I remember after my freshman year, they took our study hall away and they gave us like focused activities we had to do. Mm-hmm. So it was like our brain still had to stay focused. I really wish we could have meditated, yeah, um, things like that. Been great. I remember as a kid though, I mm-hmm. didn't necessarily go out to recess all the time. I, I took it as time. It was quiet time. I found a teacher that would let me read. I loved reading. At one point she let me read to her class. So I got mm-hmm. to be a teacher, even though I was only in like third <laughs> or fourth grade because I don't know, I got in a fight in the recess and it wasn't fun for me anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there was a high school that I went to for a few months that had, you could go anywhere for lunch. Uh, that still like, blows my mind. You also had like a Domino's or something in your in middle cafeteria. school. In middle school, they served Domino's pizza that blows for my mind too. at least one or two years. And in high school, for for a few months, I went to this one school where they allowed you to go anywhere you could go off campus or off off school property and i would always go to the gas station get like a bear claw and go sit by myself because i was just so i had so much social anxiety it was overwhelming and going to a lunchroom filled with all kinds of kids that i did not know was terrifying why do you think you had so much anxiety it's probably from as a kid, you know, I got made fun of quite a lot after in mid in elementary, everyone thought I was cool. In preschool, everyone thought I was super cool. But as like years went on and I was still like myself and didn't conform, it was like I was looked down on more and more. Hmm. I don't know if I was that popular in preschool. I feel like I was probably pretty bossy p- trying to play in like the art studio. Everyone always I very specifically remember in one of the classes, we were all playing and coloring and stuff. And then the teacher called us over to sit down. And so I went down and sat over in one chair. And all the kids ran and sat next to me as quick as they could. <laughs> and my one friend that I remember was so sad because they couldn't sit next to me. You must have had a super bright aura that day. I think I was just like, I, I was just very creative and if people were open to hearing me out i had a lot of really great ideas Hmm. so i came up with a lot of cool games and i was just i was a cool like cool kid but as years went older and people started getting into clicks and developed uh, i don't know just developed certain traits Mm. And prejudices, prejudices, mm. <laughs> big word for developed, you. big word. For <laughs> <laughs> Making some big words over there. No, I get it. Mm. It made it hard. See, when I was younger, I remember being kind of quiet. I didn't really know how to handle pre-K and like school and stuff. I loved it. I went to schools, but I also like. You know, I was Shannon hanging out with my my angels and my spirit guides and my imaginary friends to go into pre-K dealing with physical kids was a different experience for me as an only child. Um, But then I went to so in my area, there was like five or six elementary schools and I went to all of them. But one we moved around schools and my dad taught me real quick about getting comfortable being uncomfortable because Mm. I had to meet new people almost every year after my mom died. And it was just such an experience to be thrown into a completely new school. Mm -hmm. And I had to make a whole new group of friends. And there were, I started seeing clicks at a really young age because I could see like, if I started being friends with one kid, a whole group of other kids wouldn't be my friend. Every time I switched schools, um, not only that, but I was also dealing with like major loss of family members each time I switched. Um, So that was like a different kind of grief processing and I didn't have a friend system and I realized how important it was to find friends that were able to help you grow and like just experience things with you. Like the most I've I, in into the wild, he talks about like having friends to experience things with or a person to experience things with because you don't want to have to keep explaining yourself over and over again. It, it is really an expanding experience each time you explain your story Um, But that was something I didn't have a lot of. 
So it was interesting, though, when the schools come together in the older years, like middle high school, I got the life experience of seeing how all these different cliques worked and understanding how all the different people interacted with each other. And I realized that the more different groups in the different communities that I would put myself out there into being and didn't conform into to just one mindset or one group of friends rules, because mm-hmm. you know how different people have different rules to mm-hmm. hang out with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that even happens when you're an adult, you have your friends that drink and you have your friends who don't drink. You have your friends who party, you have your friends who don't party, your friends that are parents, whatever people that do yoga, people who hate yoga, like mm-hmm. things like that. They're, you're, everyone has these little clicks, whether or not you realize it, but if you cannot conform to them and just allow yourself to have your own creative, free spiritual experience, that is when you really expand. You're not limiting your belief. You're not limiting your experience. You're not limiting yourself to just a few friends, but you're expanding. You're expanding your community. You're expanding your your understanding of people. You can connect to other people. I love connecting new people and seeing new friendships form. When all those schools came together, so many groups of people, especially girls, were afraid to talk to each other. That girl's judging me. That girl hates me. Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, you know you both really like Harry Potter or you both really like this one musician. Like, why don't you guys talk? And I was just willing to to put something out there and find common ground. And you could see communities start sparking within each other and coming together and becoming allies because somebody has to go out there and be willing to be uncomfortable and to, to spark that common ground and find out how you guys can connect. Even if nothing seems connectable there's something always it, I, I believe that in each in each kind of group of of specific people those people are all different they all have different personalities even though they may dress the same or on the outside it's like on the outside these people and and these cliques and groups may look the same and so they're they're basing their relationships on that. But rather, if you can open your mind and and go into different kinds of groups or into um, different people that you might not associate yourself with, you might find their per- personalities or uh, their interests or their goals or passions are, are similar to yours. So I think having friends and a community of of people that you connect with on a deeper level, like your mission on this planet or your purpose or your personality. And that rather than just, oh, they, they, I don't know, they go bowling and I only hang out with bowlers. It's very one-sided kind of perspective. I don't know many people who only hang out with bowlers, but I was trying to, I, I'm not trying to like pick on anybody. No, I think it goes back to what you talked about at the very beginning of the podcast. If you only allow yourself to eat just cheese pizza, mm-hmm. like yeah. where's nice your excitement? Around. Where's your excitement if yes. you only eat cheese pizza? Now, maybe you don't eat cheese on your pizza. Maybe you eat or eat vegan cheese or you have, but that's okay. Maybe if you go to someone else's house, you will give something else a try for once in a while. Now I'm really hungry and I want some pizza and I want to know what you guys put on your pizza and I want to build a community and I want you guys to get We want to have different kinds of pizza sometimes. Maybe. Yeah. Celia likes pineapple on pizza. I do actually. It's so delicious. It's, it's a thing. If people... People, I've only heard of people loving it or hating it. I just don't like pineapple in general. I don't like it in my smoothies either. I dr- but you know what? Ever since you and Ashton, who got me into pineapple, th- th- he loves bringing pineapples places. Um, <laughs> ever since you guys <laughs> came into my reality, thing. yeah, I've allowed pineapple in my life. I would have never thought to even get a pineapple. I would have never thought to even order a pineapple and be considerate of other people's thoughts. But now every time we get a pizza and we're splitting it and I have an extra topping, I definitely I get you pineapple because I care about your opinion. I think it's important to care about people's opinions. Mm -hmm. Make me a smoothie and you want pineapple in it. I'll still drink the smoothie because you cared enough 
Like mm-hmm. you, you put yourself out there. Sometimes you find a compromise. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Even people that you have a lot in common with and your souls are very connected and it, you, you have to compromise in this life sometimes. And it doesn't have to be a bad word. It could be cooperator, co-create. You know the other cool thing about pizza? You can put all kinds of <laughs> toppings on it. And if you don't like it, you can pick them off and you uh, can still enjoy it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And just let it go. Yep. I really want some pizza. Okay. You guys go to Bring You to Life Challenge. <laughs> leave a comment. <laughs> start a thread. We want to hear from you. We love you. Thank you for listening to us talk. We would love to just connect. It seems like this podcast season has been really about community. Um, we love seeing our community grow. And we also want to just know what you would like to hear upcoming podcasts about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We will continue to be making them. And any input would be awesome. We appreciate all that. You can email Project Bring Me to Life at gmail.com or I'm Silamon Official at gmail.com. I'm Shantastic Shine at gmail.com. We want you to check out bringmetolife.com with the number two. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram. You can listen to the podcast on any of your favorite podcasts, favorite medias. Mm. Maybe you're listening to it somewhere that you don't like, but you loved hearing us talk. Well, you can Mm. find us on iTunes. You can find us on Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, all of it. And if we're not on it and you think we should be, you should let us know that too. But if you would like to support us in this dream and mission that we're creating, we also have a cool little donate button on the Bring Me to Life website. And all of it goes towards making sure we can keep this station up and running. Mm -hmm. And we want to share content that inspires you. So leave us a comment in the Bring Me to Life challenge and we will see you in an upcoming episode. Excellent. What a great ending. I love you, Shannon. And I love you, the listener. I definitely love myself. And I'm learning to keep it going. So thank you all. And I hope you have a great day. And I'll let Shannon end it. Stay awake, Shannon, always. Bye! For many of us, spirituality is just the the quest to find essence or true meaning. And to really just connect with a higher consciousness. Connecting with your spirituality is very important in this life. By becoming mindful of all of it, you can realize where you are and if that is leading you to where you want to go. Listen to the little simple things because it's those little simple things that are going to shift you vibrationally in such a way that will prepare you to become very intuitively minded and ready to step forward in the next part of your path. Have you can feel the love that's inside you. It's inside me that connects us. Thanks for shining on with us.